Hey guys and welcome back, this is Chosen Architect and today we are going to go after some insane creative items. So, it's game over time. So today is going to be the big day where all of our tasks that we have done thus far is going to dramatically change. So I've been waiting for kind of this kind of um, update. I was, okay, I'm just kind of waiting for an update to happen for the pack. And it really hasn't come out yet, so... Um, and, and the changes that were made are really not that drastic. But what I want to do today is get to the point where we can get, that's right, the lucrative game over crates. Um, so these game over crates have some pretty significant items in them. Um, and you can obtain them pretty easily and we're going to go over that today. So as of right now, you see there's a one, and even even if we made a regular mob spawner, eventually we would get some game over crates. Um, because killing this many mobs is not that difficult, especially with RF tools, you can spawn the wither in over and over and over again so fast and kill them at a rate that makes this number look tiny. Um, so, but we're gonna we're gonna not do that. We're not gonna sp spawn mobs in the overworld. We're gonna get uh, we're gonna do it a little bit differently. But what we're after are some of these uh, creative kits right here. Uh, preferably the creative conversion kit or in, you know any of these creative barrels or creative vending upgrades. The creative conversion kit though is the one I really want. But other than, I mean, it really doesn't matter. We can get one of these and it, it's not gonna matter. Either way, we'll eventually get a creative conversion kit. Um, but we're after this. And today we're gonna work on getting that. We pretty much have everything already set in place um, to get this thing started. The only thing we need to do is tear down the ultimate chicken killer. That's right. This guy's got to go because uh, basically this is going to be, this is creating pink slime. Well, we're no longer going to need to generate pink slime this way. So really, I can just get rid of this and that'll give us a nice place to start working on Woot. So when dabbling in Woot, what we need to do is make ourselves an anvil that is based around this mod. And we're gonna need a few items to get started. We're gonna need these plates, which we need a yaw hammer for. So we can make a yaw hammer, uh, very simple. And we should be able to make these plates. Now these plates are EMCable. So we should just be able to pop this in, bam, and we have tons of plates. Now each one of these are gonna require a special thing. We're also going to need a, which isn't in here, listed. We are going to need ourselves a magma block. Now it doesn't specifically show, you know, that you're gonna need a magma block, but you really are. Let's go ahead and do that. And we can actually store this because for some reason magma blocks with EMC seem to be something that you never encounter. <laughs> so we'll throw that in there, there. Now we always have some magma blocks, but technically we only need one at the moment. All right, so back to Woot. And I'm gonna kinda take you through how to get started with Woot because it can seem pretty daunting at first. And I, 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 want, this to, I want this to be as easy for you guys as possible. So slab, we need each one of, like one of each of these items. Really, we only need one. Now you're gonna need redstone. And you're also gonna need quartz. I do believe that's quartz, yeah. And we're gonna have to make each one of these. All right. So just to set right here, we can go ahead and set this anvil up. You need a magma block, and then on top of that, you're gonna put the anvil. Very simple, right? Um, now, for the crafts, the crafts involve this hammer, and we're gonna to have to set that up. So what we need is to place the iron bars, because you see the recipe here. You have the iron bars down at the bottom, and then up top, you have the plate. Anything that's in this top slot are things that are gonna be thrown into the world. Anything that's in the bottom, is stuff that is actually gonna be placed onto the anvil. So you can see we can place iron bars onto the anvil. But what we need is we need one of these plates to be thrown on the outside, and then we right click with the hammer and it's gonna craft our first mesh. And we need to do this for each item. You can see right here, we can throw one of those, bam, craft it. And we only have to make one of these, so that should be pretty straightforward. Right, we just toss it on there. And if you want to, it's probably best to turn off your, your magnet so that you don't have any interference with anything. But we're gonna get one of each, which we're getting very close, there we go. This one's actually gonna be used quite a bit. And that is the shards. There we go, perfect. 
we have now crafted some of the main items that we're going to be using. And these are actually going to be used later on more in the anvil. Um, so just keep that in mind. So now that we've done that, we need to kind of make something else. And that is the factory layout. So we're going to make one of those. And we're also going to make the, um, the intern. Now the intern is going to do all the work for you. That's why it's called intern. Um, <laughs> so let's go ahead and make all the items for it. The intern is actually pretty nice, um, along with the factory layout block, which I thought we just made. Oh, yeah, that's right. We had to make one because we had to use it. Um, but this guy is really cool. Let's go ahead and place this over here. And this is going to set the layout and is actually a functional part of this whole setup. I'm going to place it right here. And you can see this is a tier one woot farm. Very simple. If we right click it, that's tier two. Tells us in the chat, there's tier three. And last but not least, this is the one we're going to be making today, which is a tier four. I know it looks very daunting, but believe me, it's not as hard as it looks, especially with EMC. It's actually quite simple. All right. So with that being said, let's go ahead and move on. Um, we can now start working on some things here with this actual intern. The intern itself, if you hold shift and right click, you can change the tier at which it's going to set to. And we want it to be on the tier four. That's the highest tier. And when you hover over it, it's going to tell you every single thing you need. You can see we have 10 factory flesh casings and they, the casings keep going until we hit the base. And then we have caps. Um, anything that is in red are things that will have to be manually placed by you. Um, and it does kind of tell you that there. But each one of these things uh, are something that we have to make. So let's take a look at this. We can hover over it. We say, it says 10 factory casings. This is where we get into our first set here. And we have the factory flesh casings, which are right here, which require these factory bases, which are going to require a little bit of work. We need some soul sand with this. And you can see right there, I want to keep that hammer on me, by the way, because it does allow me to craft physical items. And there we go. That'll give us some of that stone. You can go ahead and just pull some out. We don't need a bunch of it. Just enough to get us by here for a second. We're going to do that. And then we can EMC a bunch of these, right? I want these to be used because, you know, we can technically, we, I'm storing them in the base, but you don't have to. You could technically store them in here if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, we need to go ahead and craft them. So this we need 10 of them, remember? So we need exactly 10 and just store it in your inventory. And then you're going to go back here. You're going to say, okay, we need factory bone casings. So it's going to go to the next one in the tier and we're going to need what? 14. How many did it say? 14. So yeah, just 14 of those. And you're going to keep doing this all through the list. Um, and you're going to see, you're going to need blaze. You're going to eventually need ender pearls. You're going to need these star shards. So these nether star shards are a little bit different. To craft those, you're going to need another star and you're going to need that die that we made. So let's get another star. And what you do is place the die there, throw down your nether stars and take your hammer and just, you know, get you some. That's all you got to do. And you just keep right clicking with it or you can just hold right click. Either way, it doesn't really matter. It's going to craft them for you. Very simple. Honestly, you don't need too many of them. I'm just using this as an example. Um, but yes, you will have to craft some. So after you're all done, which I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these crafted, um, we're going to work on some of the other harder ones. So we have a few things that we're going to need left. I have all the main stuff crafted and the factory heart. Uh, we need to go ahead and get ourselves the factory controller. This is going to actually require you to spawn in a wither in order to complete this. Um, because technically the factory controller, whatever you set this shard to when it's programmed, is what you're going to spawn in through the controller. You can you can have multiple controllers, um, but as of right now, that's what you have to worry about. So what are we missing? Purple. Okay, so we're missing purple. Figure we should have just about everything, but there we go. That's our last color. And we should be able to make the prism. Now the prism, save that. That is EMC, so you don't have to worry about it later. And we are going to need a plate, the same one we have here. So we just throw these two things, hit that, bam, that is going to get us a controller core. And like I said, the controller core is going to require you to defeat the, the wither. But believe me, we're just going to spawn the wither in our base. That may sound like a bad idea, but it, it, believe me, it's not going to be that, that much of a deal. 
Um, especially with all the health stuff we have. And this sword is absolutely insane. Um, so with that being said, we are pretty much ready to go. We just need to make an ender shard. So we need the ender pearl. I believe it's ender pearl that makes the ender shard. Actually a better check. It's either the ender pearl or eye of ender. Yeah. Eye of ender. There we go. We only need one for right now. So I'm just literally going to make one. Make sure to get the shard casing on here. Throw that on. Bam. You'll get a few of them. Like I said, we only need one. And we need some heads. Preferably in soul sand. So. Four soul sand. And. What else are we going to need? Wither skeleton skulls. Awesome. So where to spawn this thing? That's the question. How about over here where we were going to do it anyways? Yeah, we can spawn it over here. It's not a big deal. Make sure that our base is protected though, and we should be fine um, because he won't actually explode an area that's protected. All right, so just be prepared. When he does spawn, you're gonna want probably this, you're gonna wanna punch him with it whenever he finally, you know, comes into himself, grows into himself. Uh, of course, where are you going? All right, and just completely slaughter him like that. It takes, yeah, nothing. Literally just hitting C while this sword is in your hand and it will fully kill him and this thing is fully programmed. It's that simple. All right, so last but not least, we need to get this last bit right here. We're gonna need a factory base and a controller. And the factory base and controller is going to be applied with the shard. So remember that shard that we just fully programmed? We can place that down. We're going to need the controller and a base. And we throw those two out. And that will get us a controller that's set to the wither for a tier four. And I think that's about it. Uh, there's only a couple other things that we need to make. And those are the importer, the exporter, and then we need to worry about power. Now, power is going to be a thing here. Um, it requires power cores, and technically this tiers up. So there's something that I'm going to have to make. And you see, it requires a dragon egg as well. Um, each one of these cores require four of the singles. So technically you're going to need 12, right? You're going to need 12 of these singles, which means you're going to need at least 12 power cores in order to complete this. So you need some coal on the, the die, and that should be about it. And then to enchant stuff, you're going to have to use an enchanter. Uh, that's going to be the easiest way to do it in this pack. Just make the books you need and make sure you have the experience. I have tons of experience laying around over here that I can just give myself... Um, so that's the best way to do it. And you're going to need like power one for most of these things. But other than that, it's going to be set up time. So let's go ahead and get this made and I'll meet you over there. So here we are pretty much ready to go. I have my power. By the way, you're going to need an efficiency three and a power uh, three. And you're also going to need three power two enchanted books in case you wanted to know how many enchanted books you're going to need for this. Um, but anyways, what we can go ahead and do, I'm just going to for right now, place a block here just so I can place the heart. We'll place the heart and then I'm gonna break this because we don't we don't wanna place that there. Um, that wood I can leave empty, that's fine. Um, but all we gotta do now is just hold right click with our intern and it's going to manually place it, it's not gonna manually, it's gonna place it for us. All of the blocks that are needed for this, it will place for us and it's such a wonderful thing. Um, cause all you gotta do is just basically make sure that you have everything that it listed and yeah, it's just going to start working for you. Very, very simple. Um, so we're going to keep letting it build. As you can see, you can kind of see it building there in the background. You can see it just starting to fill all those block spaces up. It doesn't actually give you a message or anything whenever it's completed. So you'll just have to check to make sure it's completed, but it doesn't actually finish the whole thing for you. There is a few things that you need to do 
um, to make sure that it is completed. You can check your inventory. You can see we have a few more caps left. And now it's completed. And this is the multi-block structure, right? But this thing is ready to be uh, ready to be started, but it is missing a few things. Um, before it can get started, we need, we do need to place down our actual controller. So the controller goes there. And then underneath, we can still leave our factory layout, but we're going to need to place the um, power here. Underneath the power, we're going to have an importer so we can import items into it because it is going to require items. And then underneath that is going to be the exporter. This is where items are going to come out of this. So now that everything is ready to go, we should be able to look in here and see that we do have the game over chess, legendary, and we also have some rare chests in here. So all we got to do now is fill this with some wither skeleton skulls and soul sand, and that should be a pretty easy task for us to automate. Um, over here, of course, we have our simulation chamber, which now has our dragon in it, but I think we have enough of the dragon stuff. And I think we should be able to easily convert this over to another uh, method, which should be getting heads. So I think we have a maxed out wither skeleton data mod uh, module. Not a wither, but a wither skeleton. Um, and we should be able to just break these and carry them with us, I believe. These do like hold their inventory, which is awesome. Um, and we need to fill this. Basically, we're going to do the same thing here. Um, remember, this is a specific thing which we're going to need a barrel for. And then the other one, which this right here needs to be swapped out. We can go ahead and swap that out. Um, we're going to have one barrel here and we're going to have an ender chest here. Right? So let's go ahead and make an ender chest. Good old fashioned ender chest. Um, and these are, of course, EMCable, so we should be able to make multiples. There we go. And uh, what I want to do is I want one specific thing to go in here and then in the barrel, we can have the nether stuff go in. So this should be the nether. At least should be. I think we have to go down here and fix some of the uh, filters that we have set. Let's see, do I have an insert filter? It does. So we'll just change these insert filters to fit the items that are going to be actually pulled out. There we go. There's the matter. And now we need to set these. This one, these actually need to be programmed. And I think some black dye would probably be pretty good. That would work pretty good, well. Now, since I've, like I said, since I've, I've said this before, since I'm not on a multiplayer server, I don't need to hit these with diamond, but normally you would have to add that step of hitting that lock with a, uh, the front lock with the diamond to lock it to your player data. All right, I think this is also locked. No, this one does not have a filter. So that should be accepting heads. And we do need to filter this though. There we go. And we'll set that to Wither Skeleton Skulls. That should send Wither Skeleton Skulls right there. Perfect. Now all we have to do is go down underneath here. And on our importer, just place the chest on our importer. It is that simple. All you got to do is it'll automatically connect and be ready to go. Then we need an M MC link. What we can do here, place the MC link there. We need soul sand. You can just drag that in like so. And now that should be giving it everything except for power that this thing needs to generate. Now I do want to get another thing, which is another ender chest. And I want this to have an import bus, which we're going to have to make. So we have this ender chest. We need to make an import, an import bus. There we go. That's going to connect to an ender chest that we have. And what color do we want to do this? Purple. 
I think purple would work well. Place them right next to each other. This will be the, the contents that we get back from this. All right, perfect. Now underneath, all you gotta do is, this is the output hatch. So you just place this on the output and whenever this gets some power, it should automatically start working. So speaking of power, we'll take our point and hook our point directly to this, to our power system and make sure this is turned off. And now that should work and we should hopefully start seeing some of those in-game crates come in before we know it. So I'm gonna place my chest right here and we're gonna place that importer right there. And all we gotta do now is get ourselves some anchors. I think I had some left. We have one. Cable anchor. Let's go ahead and make ourselves another another quartz knife. There we go. Now we have enough, and we should be able to place these here, and that'll just keep them from connecting. And there we go. Anything that goes in here now should be automatically put into our system and stored away for safekeeping later. Super, super handy, um, which means we are on the lookout for those game over chests. Remember, that is what we're looking for from this. Now, we can make this a lot faster because right now it is pretty slow um, and there are upgrades. Now, the upgrades are going to require enchantment, so make sure you have the levels for it. But Woot does have upgrades and you have rate upgrades, which are going to require these tier one cores and then you have tier two cores. Um, which are they're pretty simple to make. You just make a bunch of these cores and you should be ready to go. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make the rate ones. It's going to require some enchantments um, and they do just scale up. So power, looting, the XP is like luck of the sea. The main ones we want are rate, looting, and then mass. And then you can throw either XP or efficiency, depending on what you're actually wanting to do. Um, probably some experience would probably be nice. It gives you experience shards, but it's not exactly necessary. So when placing these, these may look a bit confusing, but you need to place them on top of the factory upgrade bases. And you're gonna start with the lowest tier. So tier one, and then you're gonna go with, with gold and then the diamond one. And they are going to kind of get smaller as they go up. That is how these things tier up. And it doesn't really matter um, where you place these as long as you're placing them tiered on top of one another, because that is exactly how it works. And you have up to four that you can use, right? Those are, there's our efficiency ones. And I went with efficiency instead of experience, but this is technically a tier, a top tier um, mob farm. And right here, it is producing four withers at a time every 300 ticks at a cost of 58,000 uh, RF or 59,000 RF a tick. So as long as you can maintain 50,000 RF a tick, which we pretty much can with just one of these petrified fuel generators, um, you should be good to go. Now, like I said, game over crates is what we're after. How many do we have? Do we have any? We are gaining crates and we are getting legendary crates. Um, of course, I've already gotten all the legendary crates. That was super nice to get a rainbow generator. Um, but what we can do is we can use a time in the bottle on this to, to drastically speed this up. And no joke, this thing will go as fast as we can pump power into it. It is super, super cool. And all we gotta do is look for crates and just hope that we get a game over crate. Um, and when it says game over, it's not exactly game over. There's actually a lot of stuff that we still have to continue to do in order to beat this pack. Um, but this is definitely one of those awesome ways that you can uh, utilize this giant, giant uh, factory, Woot factory, in order to do that. So yeah, just keep that in mind. That is something that you can definitely do. And uh, hopefully I'll give this a couple of minutes and uh, hopefully we can get some crates and get lucky with them. So after a bit of time, I think maybe I've been setting idle for about an hour or so, just to allow enough crates to start to generate. Um, we should have some game over crates. 
looky there. Now, what we want from these is if we get lucky, we should be left over with at least one crate. So we want to keep a crate to the side, and we're going to hope that we get something good from these crates. Oh, man. Well, there's a creative barrel upgrade. That's, that's awesome. Um, what I'm looking for, though, is a creative conversion kit. But that creative barrel is perfect. That's not a big deal either. There we go. There's the creative conversion kit. That is all we need, guys, is that creative conversion kit. So, we can pretty much get rid of our loot setup now. Um, this is absolutely insane, and I'm, I'm gonna kind of show you. Um, so, all we need is a strong box from Thermal. And a strong box, when applied with a creative uh, upgrade, well, I, let's, just, uh, let's just show you. Actually, I probably want to keep this close to my system over here. Um, let me just show you what it does. You place it down, slap that creative conversion kit on there, and let's go ahead and dump some of these items that we have on us because we're going to, of course, need some items. Um, there we go. And the core. And here's what we're going to need to do. We can just take this, open it up, put those in there. And now we can take in, like, take a stack at a time, or you can right click, and you can just go absolutely crazy with this. Yeah. This is, yeah, pretty ridiculous. Um, we did unlock some quests, as you might have seen. And I'm pretty sure we just gathered everything from those. There's a creative cobble generator, if we need that. We also got some clay, which is kind of a troll. Um, yeah, we we just completed one of our tier quests, getting the final star. Which is kind of confusing because I'm pretty sure I have the final star, I just never put it back in my inventory. Um, but that gives us the chicken trophy and some money. So guys, technically it says game over, but we're actually far from game over. Um, even though you have that, you still have to produce all of this stuff. And you have to have the knowledge to do so. So getting this stuff is not just a matter of, oh, we now have a creative item slot, right? Because I can pull this out and we can have tons and tons of game over crates to store and keep in here for later. But you still need the knowledge to know how to progress through the rest of the mods. Now, this does work. Um, say you want an item that doesn't have EMC. So, say you want more amber chickens. There you go. You have more amber chickens. This is a creative box that will give you creative items. Right? So, just keep that in mind. That's exactly what that thing does. And we're at the point now where we can literally get rid of this. This is just an eyesore in my opinion. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do, is get rid of it. Because, I mean, I've, I've done all the stuff to get this thing upgraded. It's fun and all. I know we got it all done in today's episode, but I mean, honestly, this thing is so ugly and such an eyesore that I don't, wanna, I don't want it setting here, basically. Um, and that's all we, that's all I really needed it for was for the items that we ended up getting today. And then, of course, we can always build it back if we want to. Um, I find that we probably won't need it um, at this point. Because at this point, we have infinite coins to buy pretty much anything we need. So as long as we have the infinite coin, we should be perfect. Uh, I do want to make sure I grab that because that is a hard item to get. And there we go. So perfect. We have all of our stuff. And we have another spot that we can work on more things with. But man, getting that strong box is something that takes a lot of effort. And if you're not up to it, you're probably not going to get it. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> now that we have this, there is a few things that we can also do. So, say we have pink slime or tank. Let's, just, let's not just do pink slime. We can do whatever we want, really. Say icy to coolant if that's something we want to do, which was what we've been doing. Let's go ahead and get a portable tank. There we go. So now we have a portable tank. Um, we can take this with a conversion kit. And of course we can make more conversion kits if we want to. So there's some more conversion kits. I don't think we need that many. 
but you can place this down and place that on there. Now this is a creative tank. Um, what we need is a hammer because we won't be able to really move it without that. So we need a hammer to be able to pick it up. Um, and what we can do is place this here. I think we can place this on there. It won't automatically pump, I don't think. It doesn't look like it automatically pumps. But we can automatically pump to it. So let's go ahead and get, let's see. Well, we have the portable tank. We need conduit, probably. That's probably the best thing. At least as of right now, that's the best thing. Is some fluid conduit. And we can go, all right, let's extract to this tank. And as soon as that fluid goes in it, it'll make it creative and of that fluid. So there you go. Now we have a creative tank of IC2 coolant. And that's pretty much all we have to do. And we can do the same thing for this fluid or whatever fluid we want to. And we can have a bunch of creative tanks pumping into the quests. And if you want to just drain it directly, you can just drain it like that. And that's going to automatically drain out. And then we can just complete the quest and watch it just fill back up. Since this is such a low quantity in this one, this should fill really fast. I mean, that's yeah, that fills really, really fast. And um, if you take some more pipes, you can actually make this faster. Like this and set these all to extract always active and then put some speed upgrades in them. This thing can go incredibly fast. It's no joke. So these pipes allow speed upgrades. So there we go. Pretty much as soon as you click that, you give it a couple seconds and it's ready to go again. And you can just completely just rig the, uh, the amount of uh, coin you can get. Um, and you can do that for all the different ones. So that is why you want to, to strive for a whoop farm. Uh, it may not seem that practical at first, but as soon as you can get one of these strong boxes or any of the creative upgrades, you are going to be golden. Now, keep in mind, this is in this version of the pack. If you cannot do this in your version of the pack, you need to check and make sure that these weren't removed because these may get removed. As far as I know, they're not getting removed, but they might get removed in your version. So just check and make sure this could be five revisions from the, the version I'm on. I'm still on the first version and I've made it this far and no update has really come out. Um, so yeah, we're almost 20 episodes in and no update. So I'm going to have to say that this is probably intended. So as far as I know, um, but we're going to keep going with it and uh, hope that we can get through this pack pretty nice now. It should be pretty smooth. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, don't forget to click that subscribe button if you haven't already. And also give this video, guys, a huge thumbs up. I'll see you guys in the next episode. And as always, thanks for watching.